1620, while the Mayflower was in Provincetown, 18 of its men sailed in a small shallop, searching for a place to live. They came to present-day East Ham, where they were met by a group of Nosset. After a brief but violent encounter, the English left towards today's Plymouth. In 2020, we remember this first encounter. We explore its meanings for today and tomorrow. I just wanted to show you some other interesting facts about the, the, the native peoples who were brought to England in the early part of the 17th century. This is a screenshot, sorry it's not very clear, of a map of a recent, recent initiative um, that was, uh, is organized by the University of Kent and some scholars who are interested in the uh, the presence of native people in, in uh, Britain, in England especially, in the 17th century. And this is a map of all the places in London where they know native people have lived. And the map um, includes data going from the early 17th century all the way up to the end of the 19th century. And it's a wonderful set of stories, but today we're focusing on the 17th century native visitors. Um, here's another old map of London, which sort of orients this previous map. Let's see if I can get that back. So there, there is the, the sort of general map. And if you, you can access this online if you're interested. And each one of those little locational marks will tell you what native person it was and who they were living with as far as they know and when they were there. It's a wonderful resource for teaching and just for general interest. There's, there's the uh, 17th century image of the city. It shows you how compact it was compared to today. And finally, this is Cornhill, which is where Squanto lived for at least three years <coughs> with the merchant John Slaney. So you can see that he, in his day, was in the heart of commercial and, uh, and literary and cultural London, and had the opportunity as a result of his associationship with Mr. Slaney, who was also an associate of Sir, Sir Ferdinand Gorges and some of the other uh, British entrepreneurs who were sending expeditions to the New World. So, Try to, I know most of you have been to London, try to picture <coughs> what this place must have been like in the early 17th century. You know, Shakespeare was still writing, Queen Elizabeth was on the throne for part of this time. This was an exciting and innovative period in England, and here were our um, renowned native representatives in the thick of it. Another person we have to uh, acknowledge in this story is, of course, um, Sir Walter Raleigh, who um, was responsible for missions not only to uh, this part of the world, but to Guiana, and also, of course, to Jamestown. And uh, sadly, this didn't work out all that well for him, um, but he was also responsible for bringing a number of native people from the eastern, from the coastal Carolinas and further north, and the, the Gannon people to England for the same reasons, so that they could learn English, so that they could serve as interpreters uh, and further English colonization efforts. Um, and another one of the associates with whom we have to reckon is John Smith, 
<coughs> also, kind of like uh, popping up in different places, as we know. Um, one of the places was Jamestown, and another one was New England. And um, each of these individuals was responsible for, or someone uh, sailing for them, was responsible for the capture and return of Native people to England. A number of historians have studied this set of visitors to Britain and to Europe based on captures or other kinds of negotiations that people like Smith and Sir Walter Raleigh made with Native peoples um, so that we understand a little bit more about how familiar Native people were with the Old World and more, in some ways, as importantly, how English people and other people from other uh, parts of Europe became familiar with Native Americans long before they ever saw the Americas themselves. <clears throat> John Smith uh, was also responsible for bringing the largest entourage, entourage of Native people to uh, Europe. This is Pocahontas, as you know, married to John Rolfe. <coughs> Excuse me. Arrived in London in 1618, I believe. She brought 40 people with her, all Native people from the Powhatan area of Virginia. But all, I want to point out, speakers of languages related to the languages spoken in New England. These were all Algonquin speakers, and they um, likely um, were able to communicate in a basic way, not, not entirely um, fluent in each other's languages, but likely to, to know and understand something about each other's languages. <clears throat> As you probably know, Pocahontas died at Gravesend in 1619, but most of her entourage survived. Some of them stayed in England. Some of them ended up in Bermuda, my husband's area of expertise, and some of them ultimately returned to Virginia. So a large group of people um, were in England, in London, before the pilgrims arrived on the Cape. Now, of course, we all know that the pilgrims were spending, uh, they were in Leiden at the time of the Pocahontas' visit to, um, to this area. However, there were, as we all know, um, so-called strangers associated with the pilgrim um, colony who came from London and who were knowledgeable about um, the, the whole colonization project, and some of them had been in Virginia. Uh, one of these individuals, Stephen Hopkins, turns up in Mort's relation, and it is clear that he also spent time in Virginia and knew something about Algonquin languages and Algonquin people as a result of his time in Jamestown. Of course, John Smith also um, had spent time in Jamestown. So there were several people associated with the so-called first encounter here on the, at, on the Cape who um, had encountered Native people several times before that. My name is Joanna Hollick. I hope that you're enjoying the Sunset Series so far. In addition to the Sunset Series, East Ham 400 is also producing a second program called the Campfire Series, which will take place on Sundays in July and August. The Campfire Series is a series of one hour long videos that will focus more in depth on some of the themes that we discuss here at the Sunset Series. The first Campfire Series video, which will be released on July 5th, is a recording of a presentation given by Ian Saxing last fall, in which he discusses his book, The Story of the First Encounter at Nauset. 
The second Campfire Series video, which will be released on July 13th, is a presentation given by Mark Adams as he talks about the changing environment and landscape here on Cape Cod. The Campfire Series videos can be found in the same places that the Sunset Series videos can be found, on our East Ham 400 YouTube channel or at easthamp400.org. We hope that you will join us for this series. Thank you.